Hey guys, welcome to Marine Life. I just want to give you guys an update as far as what's been going on in my tank. Um, so today I'm going to be talking about marine parasites. It's a big issue out there. A lot of people deal with it and I'm going to share my experience with it and try to get everything in one video. I'll try not to make it too long. And excuse the uh, wiring still up in the scene. I haven't finished uh, wiring the tank up. As I explained to you, this is actually a new installed tank. I bought it used. It's a Red Sea Reefer 750 XXL. And I'm still trying to finish the wiring up, stuff like that. So here's a backstory. I had a 140 gallon tank and acrylic. I had it running for two years. Everything was great. Um, my fish were in there. Somebody's fish in the tank right now are from that previous tank. They're even three years old. And I have another tank that's 40 gallon. I even had the fish eight years old from the same system. So when I had that 140, I decided to buy a powder brown tank. And I didn't quarantine that tank. Well, the blonde nasal, as he's swimming around, decided he was gonna be uh, the boss of that powder brown. Well, he stressed that tank out so bad that apparently the tank, the powder brown had velvet which an ick, who knows, bunch of other stuff. And I get to that now. So I pulled the powder brown out one day um, and he got, I mean, destroyed pretty bad. So I did what everybody recommends, which was pull all the fish out of the tank. I had nine fish and I started quarantining everybody. Um, only four out of the nine survived. Uh, the fish from that system that survived are the blonde naso, uh, the purple tang, and uh, who else in here? Uh, that's pretty much it. And from this descent tank, the 40 gallon breeder has my hawkfish that he survived as well. And he's in another 40 gallon breeder. My wife likes him, so we put him in there. And he's eight years old and he survived it. And a lunar wrasse, also, that I traded in because he ate. He ate the uh, the black mollies that I had, and I'll explain to you in a second. So the Moriari wrasse actually was a trade-in for that lunar wrasse um, that you see in this tank right now swimming up in the corner up there. So anyway, so two of the fish in here are survivors from that breakout in that tank, and they were quarantined. Okay, so, so we started a 76-day period, right, which is what they suggest. I actually went 90 because during that process of quarantine, I had two quarantine tanks. One quarantine tank did not make it, obviously. Uh, the other quarantine tank that had the purple, the blonde naso, the lunar rats, and the hawkfish all made it. My other tank that had uh, my chromis, it had my beautiful eight-year-old uh, clownfish and another baby clown that I got from somebody. Uh, my two mini tang, and um, I think that was... Pretty much, I'm probably missing. Oh, my cardinal, that he was about nine years old. He passed away. Well, the chromos was actually nine years old as well, and he passed away as well. So I lost about five out of my nine. So the hawkfish, uh, the blonde nace, so the purple, and the lunar ras, which I traded in, and the hawk all survived. So four. So I started buying new fish during the process to quarantine. So when I got the tanks, you know, seventy six days. Um, it would be fine again. So I bought the Mimic Tang you see in here. Um, and I bought a Powder Brown again. That I'll get to him in a second. And I quarantined. Um, so I ran the fish through Copper, General Cure. Um, finished everything 30 days out. Um, then I decided I saw some of the Powder Brown or the Mimic Tang. He was itching on the sand despite the fact that he had been through medication. So I decided to, uh, which is a 40 gallon breeder, so I had no crows at the time. So I decided to do what they call hyposalinity. So you can imagine my, my tanks at this point have been through copper, general cure, and not to mention a hyposalinity treatment as well, which is 30 days. They went longer than that. So I put everybody together in a tank. They were kind of tight for the time being, but you know what? It got rid of the fluke. So I went through the 30 day period of the hypo 
and busting it back up. And I started adding fish back into the 140 gallon tent that I had. I can show a picture of it. Well, the blonde nation, for some, despite being together in a 40 gallon breeder, decided that he didn't like the powder brown being in a big tank. So he started going to the powder brown. No issues for a while. Eventually what happened was that the powder brown got so stressed out that it developed uh, bloat, I guess. It kind of, he, he got backed up and he wouldn't eat. And his stomach got so massive that it looked like it was like super fat, but he wasn't, he, hadn't, he wasn't eating anymore. What happens with the blonde naso is not that he's actually attacking the fish all the time. He gets very food aggressive when you put nori in the tank. Right, so if you notice in the tank, I have clips on each corner of the tank, and that's to avoid for him swimming from because he literally will patrol one side to another. And people say, Well, you should have got rid of him. My wife told me, Oh, get rid of him. And I thought about getting rid of her, and I've had her for over three years already. So it crossed my mind, but here's my my dilemma about not getting rid of her. Tanks are naturally aggressive fish, and if you see my tank, they actually get along pretty well, they bicker from time to time. But it's not something where they keep, you know, going out to each other. If I take that blonde nasal out of the equation, my whole theory is who is next in line to become the boss in the tank? So my thing, it could become worse. So in theory, if I keep uh, the blonde nasal in there, perhaps I will, you know, keep from something from a higher rain uh, coming up into the system and just kind of keep the piece the way it is because it's kind of hard to keep these multiple tanks especially if you notice that have a pot of blue an achilles tang purple tang and those are pretty known as probably aggressive fish you can get in there i mean and you can see that not much is getting there's no chasing i mean there's a little bit of sparring but nothing out of the what you see normal you know situation and it's normally i guess some type of uh fighting going in there um anyways so when i took the powder brown out it was kind of like half you know dead already i, I didn't make it so i was able to pull it out one night just went to the corner and lights were shut off so i quickly swiped it out i put it back in a 40 gram breeder thinking that i may be able to bring it help it out at least and then probably rehome it eventually no it died i think a few days later it just passed away so okay so um, I did have a powder blue that introduced to the tank at the same time. It was a small guy. He went through quarantine too, and he was so small and he went to tank first. He was so small that the, and I put him in with the Moyeri Ras, which I actually quarantined together, the little baby powder blue. So at this point I got the three powder blues to get the right one. Long story, but anyways. So when I put that baby powder blue in there, he did not make it literally within days. He freaked out because when I put the other tanks in the tanks into the tank, uh, after the 76 day period, which actually turned to 90 days for me, he kind of like, he couldn't take it. He just freaked out those too many. So he didn't, he stopped eating period and he wouldn't come out from the top of the rock. He just hang out there all day. Um, so anyway, so this is actually my third pot of, of blue. Um, and I got him again. I quarant he'd been quarantined as well. <clears throat> so anyway, so 76 days, everybody wanted to tank, pot of brown, pot of blue lost them. When I took that pot of brown tank, out of the tank i noticed he had a couple white spots on him and i kind of freaked out because here i am done everything i did gone through the process and here we go again i was so annoyed at that point so i told my wife you know what i'm just gonna scrap the tank because i done some research and you can actually if you go to humble fish forum he has a ton of information on there so what came out during this time is that apparently is that if you go through a 90 day period, but in the rocks, if you have some dead spots in your tank, that's not being blasted by power heads, the parasite can actually be dormant there uh, for that long term. It's like crap. So I freaked out and I told, you know, I said, you know what? I must have something in my tank again. So I told my wife, you know what? The credit tank is kind of scratched up and let's time to upgrade and get, I want a bigger tank for the tanks anyway, cause I want an Achilles tank. And we actually put one in as well that was quarantined and he didn't make it. Not because um, 
He was sick because I got him from a reputable place, but he got destroyed by uh, one of, I think the Mimic Tank, and he literally, I have pictures of him, he got butchered really bad. I can share if it is that if you guys want to see it. So apparently, I guess I gone through a blue, powder blue, powder brown, and Achilles did not make any tanks. So you know what? I'm gonna get a bigger tank, uh, more room for the swim, and I want that way I can get along because my goal is to actually have an Achilles. Okay. So when I got this tank set up, and I just got this tank set up September 17th of 2020. So this is really what today is. So it's only been like over. It's been over 30 days. So I set the tank up. I got everything going fine. Um, I got another Achilles tank, quarantine again. First, I thought I'd put him in, in the tank first. Um, the tank was cycled. And what I did, my way of cycling the tank, as you can see, is I got black mollies in the tank and I put them in there with fresh water. Fill the tank up with fresh water. Cause I, all the rocks in here were literally, uh, I got it from the, the guy who I bought the tank from and they've been sitting dry for such a long time that I said, you know what? I'm starting brand new rock, everything brand new. I don't want no parasites. Okay. So when I set the tank up, black mountain started fresh water, I converted to salt water and I used them as for an alert system. Okay. Um, so three weeks went by, I dosed the tank with not trying fat bacteria, everything's fine. Well, I had the black, the, uh, my Cleese tank showed up, the new one, the replacement for the other one. And he made it uh, almost a week and he didn't, he died. Don't know if my parameters were bad or it wasn't bad, actually it was a brand new tank, but I tested the water, I had no ammonia in it. I had very low nitrite in it. So I don't know what was it that he just did not make it. So I was really just pissed off because that was my second one and they're not cheap. Um, and so far my tank, everything was good. As a matter of fact, in the process of, of um, the Achilles tank being a tank, I kind of freaked out. So I threw in two of the rocks that were my 40 gallon breeder into this tank thinking, okay, if anything happens, the black molly is alert and they would tell me first that there's something wrong in the tank and I can just not put everybody in, that's been going through quarantine at this point again that something happened so i put the rocks in with the him the black molly showed no signs of any parasites or anything like that i didn't see anything i didn't see rocks. okay everything's fine so i after he died i just started adding my other tanks that were in quarantine for like the fifth time again back into the tank no problem so everything's fine. There's no ick, no nothing. The powder, the powder blue was actually uh, been quarantined. So he went to two quarantines. I don't think. No, he just went to the one quarantine. I'm sorry. I got him in the middle of breaking the other tank down. I didn't have him yet. So this is my third powder blue and he quarantined fantastic. He was great. Um, and he made it great. I think he didn't make it to the 76. I'm trying to remember. I don't remember into the 140. I don't remember if I had him in that big tank or not, but he did go, anyways, he went through quarantine. Uh, he did fantastic in quarantine actually. And um, actually he did go through the 140 and I have to pull him out. When I put everybody else to change the tank out, he went bent, oh, that's right, he did. He went through quarantine again with the purple and him and the Mario Raz, all three went to the same quarantine tank. And the, only, the other quarantine tank I put in my, uh, my clown female, that's a replacement I have from the other one. She's a nebula clown. And my wife picked up a uh, mocha gladiator clown to replace her. May have passed away. I don't know why. but And we quarantined him with her together. So we had the mimic, the blonde naso, and the two clowns together in quarantine. Everybody went through again. Copper, uh, general cure again, just to make sure. This new 750 set up, no problem, boom, air, no frying. And I found this little, they're gonna get another Achilles tank and I found this guy, my local LFS, and that local LFS that I have, he'd been in the tank system for two months. He, he could, they couldn't sell him. I, get, I got my great deal on him because he'd been this long time. Well, the LFS that I go to, actually, when I went to say, okay, I gotta put the quarantine, I'm gonna quarantine him. And they said, well, there's no need. He's been in copper for two months. I don't really trust people uh, when they tell me that. So I checked the water with my Hannah checker. And lo and behold, guess what? It's true. 
he literally was over therapeutic. He was at 2.25. And with copper power, it's a minute 1.5. So I said, man, he's been to two months in copper. The sensitive fish, I'm not gonna keep him in copper longer and stress him out again, especially being so sensitive. This is my third one. So I put him in a tank and I put a divider first and he escaped one day. I just, I'm like, oh crap, it's gonna go bad. And luckily nothing really happened. A little bit of chasing here and there, but you know what? As you can see, they get along great. Um, everything was fine. Sometimes then the, the blonde nasal again started getting possessive again over the nori, um, but it's towards more the powder blue than it is any other fish in the tank. But it's like a cycle because the pot, the nasal uh, chase off the powder blue, the mimic will mess with the blonde nasal. So it's, it's a big smorgasbord, you know? Um, so about October 13th, I noticed white spots on the Achilles tank and the purple tank. And I'm here and I'm freaking out like, what the heck is going on? Again, here we go. I'm literally just at this point, just fed up. I'm, I just want to put a rocket or a grenade into a tank, be done with it, boom. I don't know how it happened. And it's not from the fish. The only thing I can guess of is that the rocks that came from the Florida breeder, even though the fish and that Florida breeder have no signs of any parasite whatsoever, the hawkfish and the two, I have a, a, a pair of lightning maroon clouds in that tank and they're, no, they're not sick. So October 13th, I noticed some spot and I started freaking out. I was like, oh, okay, this is so pissed off. And mind you, I've had a 40 watt UV sterilizer in this tank since day one. I literally, I started up right before I put the fish in after everything was cycled. Boom, keep the thing down. So, um, I started posting in forums and I didn't know if it's it yet or not. Cause you know, just cause you have white spots here and there, um, doesn't mean it's always ache, you know, it could be other things. So I waited and I waited. And then all of a sudden a week later after that, I think it's about October 20th. Yes, October 20th. I noticed that the white spots on the Achilles have increased. I was like, oh, here we go. So here we go again. My wife's like, listen, we can't go through quarantine tanks again for 76 days. It's just too much. Um, I already had two tanks. I can't add two more tanks. With the amount of fish I have, it would take me too much. It's just a lot to maintain. It's very hard. So I started a new system that they're trying out at Humble Fish uh, Forums and ASD H2O2 dosing, which is hydrogen peroxide dosing, right? I already had tried that before. Before I started to tank down, just never completed it because I went with a new tank and start from scratch. So... I've been doing that new treatment right now. This is my, I just started my second week. And what I started with, off with is, um, first week I started eight mils per, uh, I think it's per one gallon, is it? Yes, I'll double check that. But it was eight, eight mils of hydrogen peroxide per, I think it's per gallon. And right now I'm dosing, uh, so I was dosing about 24 mLs per every every eight hours is what I've been dosing. So when I tried to do it originally, it was very difficult to do because I was doing it uh, with my every, every eight hours manually and it became such a pain in the butt that I said, you know what, I can't do it. So I actually broke down and I bought a Kimura pump and it makes your life a whole lot easier with dosing the stuff. And I'll show my setup in a moment. Um, so I started dosing and so far so good as far as um, the fish um, keeping it alive. And you will see that I still have signs of ache in it, but uh, at the same time, everybody's really, really just healthy. Um, and I'm sorry, it was one ml per eight gallons every eight to 12 hours, right? So I do it every eight hours. So it's one ml per eight gallons of hydrogen peroxide the first week. And um, and so as you can see, now I'm gonna take the camera a little bit closer to you so you can see that the, um, the ick, you can see ick exactly on the Achilles tank. And I showed my setup. 
So before I go into that, I'll just say a little bit. So right now, this is my second week and second week I'm actually doing, um, I increased it to one ml per five gallons. So I'm doing 40 uh, ml every eight hours, right? And then the third week it goes to uh, 40 mls eight hours. And then from for six hours straight, you'll be dosing for me, I'm gonna be dosing four mls every 20 minutes. So, and that's the regimen. It has to be a total of six weeks. And I'm, my goal is to see if it works to eradicate the ick by doing a system in combination with the hydrogen peroxide with the UV, can I actually eradicate the ick, right? And I said, this is my second week. There's been no death at all. There's still signs of ick on the fish, as you'll see, but everybody's still alive. They're eating very well. And I actually, I'm feeding a lot. You saw, you saw the mimic now scratch. <clears throat> um, I do feed heavy. I feed nori every day. Um, I feed some PE uh, pellets, a uh, few in there. And at nighttime, I just dosed, I throw the tank, I throw uh, frozen food uh, with the bright well amino acid um, vitamins in there. So, cause you know, even though immune system is good to build up for them to fight the ick, my whole end game is just to pretty much eradicate the whole ick. Can it be done? I don't know. And this again, this is not me that's saying it. This is just going through Humble Fish's forum and just something they're trying, new experimental that they're trying. There's been like a 50-50, I guess, that has worked for some people that they have managed to eradicate everything using this system. So we will find out the end game. That's why this video to help other people manage this. So let me take you a close now and I'll show you Helix tank that you can see here that uh, he's very friendly so he's easy to record so you see little spots on him there and you can see nobody else is really visible because it's not black but I mean obviously if he has it they have it but he's the most visible one they want to eat so my purple tang So my purple tank did have spots on him, but if you notice something, he's literally completely clean. There's no visible white spots on him at the moment. So for him, it has. And the clowns never show anything, so. Neither did my, neither did my black molly. So what I did for my Kimura pump, excuse me, wiring again, because new tank. So see my Kimura pump there and the dose of hydrogen peroxide bottle. And I had a line going into the tank. You can see the line comes down, it goes right into, I put it right in front of the pump. So when it doses into the pump, just falls right in, goes right into the tank. So that's just uh, update my tank. Um, I'll give you guys an update to see if it works and what the end game is. If you guys have any questions, you know, um, feel free to comment and subscribe to keep in, you know, follow up to see if this works or not. Like I said, this is still experimental. I don't know if it will um, succeed or not, but, and I will share a video. These guys eat great. I mean, despite them having egg, they literally just not stop eating, which is a good sign. That means something is happening, which is good. So, all right, guys, thank you for watching Marine Life and please subscribe and like the video. Thanks.